Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the education series, the pros and cons of home can traditional home canning, freeze dried, and dehydrated. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're gonna do a reshoot. I guess that's someone who's a Facebook Live, when especially when you're technology challenged like I am. We're gonna start off for just a second with um, a something from last week from the education series. Uh, food storage equipment, the kind of food storage equipment. I talked, I showed one and then I forgot to talk about it. So here it is. This is a grain mill, an um, electric grain mill. You're going to put uh, your grain in here. It's going to go down through. It will feed out through the bottom. I want you to see how hard it is to get this thing up with one hand. Flour comes out through here, goes through here. One of the problems with this particular type of grain mill is this little silver button hooks into here, and it makes it very difficult because it creates an airtight seal so the flour doesn't go anywhere. Um, so it's very hard to get that up, even with two hands, because there's another one on the other side. Um, so it literally takes almost two people to get this thing off and the lid off without spilling flour all over the place. They, this brand makes another version, $80 more, um, that has a drawer that pulls out, same kind of height, but the drawer pulls out. And Honestly, it's worth $80 to buy the other kind. I'm just saying that. If I had to do over again, I would. that's what I would buy. Um, you have to clean these out so that they're brand new every single time you use them. Otherwise, the oil goes rancid. So I tend, because it's so cumbersome to make, I tend to grind all of my wheat, all of my rice, you know, wheat into flour, rice into flour, corn, in, dehydrated corn into cornmeal, just so I can get it done and over with, throw it in baggies, put it in the freezer. So again, uh, if you had a ch chance, uh, spend the extra eighty dollars and get that one. All right. So today we're going to talk about um, the pros and cons of traditional canning. That's what that is. Freeze dried and dehydrated. Um, so let's talk about uh, the cons of each of those three. Um, the con in traditional uh, home canning, you're seeing it right there, is water. Okay. I don't have a lot of traditional home canning left uh, because when we moved from, we ate most of it from uh, when we were in California in anticipation of moving to Texas because I had visions of water filled, you know, jars breaking on the way over here and just ruining the food would be ruined, my stuff would be ruined, everything would be ruined. I just had visions of it. So that's one of the big cons of traditional home canning. Freeze dried, absolutely. The biggest con to freeze dried is price. No way around it. Unless you buy wholesale, um, which you can do if you want to join my team, veganthrive.com. Um, I will put a link down below and you know, buy the vegetarian um, kit. You don't have to sell to anybody else. That's actually why I got involved with uh, Thrive Life was to buy my own food storage and stockpile my own food storage at wholesale pricing. So, But price is absolutely a con when it comes to uh, freeze drying. Unless you're going to spend $2,000 and buy your own home freeze dryer, which I meant to talk about last week, but from Harvest Right. Um, but that's $2,000, and honestly, $2,000 buys a lot of food, so that's why I haven't bought one of those either. Okay, dehydrated food. Um, biggest problem, con with uh, dehydrated food is uh, sizing. Uh, it's very, you need to have uh, fuel. So the biggest problem is size, um, knowing how much of a dehydrated product you need in order for, for your recipe. The second con to, to hydrating is um, you're going to have to have not only water um, to eat it or, or to, you know to, re, to rehydrate it and so it's edible but you're also going to have to have fuel. You can't just throw it in water and hope that it works. Um, so uh, that's an issue although I do have a workaround for that um, when we get to our series on thermos cooking. So those are the cons. Pluses Obviously, traditional uh, home canning, it's already cooked, it's already ready to eat. It might be cold, but you can eat it straight out of the can. Freeze dried, same thing, um, actually, you, except you don't have the cold, mushy stuff. Um, it's going to be ready to eat right out of, straight out of the can. Uh, the con with um, dehydrated is anybody can do it. You know, $70 for a dehydrator, buy a bunch of vegetables, or if you grow your own, the food's free. Um, so, you know, my grandfather built a home dehydrator and he grew, you know, a huge, you know, one acre, two acre organic garden um, and he dehydrated all his stuff. So his food was free. That's it. You can't be free. Not, not even me. So 
those are the big um, pluses. Let's talk about the differences. Um, to our right here is freeze-dried corn from Thrive Life, and that is home to hydrated corn. Now that corn happens to be, um, I went to the grocery store, bought a five pound bag of frozen mixed vegetables, dehydrated it, canned it, and by the way, five pounds went to, I've used some of it, took about two cups, went to about, fills about a half a jar. A five pound bag fills about a half a jar. So that again is one more demonstration of how are you gonna know a cup of dehydrated is not gonna be the equivalent of, you know, a cup of, you know, mixed vegetables or whatever. So you you really have to kind of guess around with it and play around with it. And, you know, if you're today where you're not, you know, if you live in Texas and you don't have a big problem, you've got time to figure it out. If you're sitting in New Jersey or New York right now under eight feet of snow and no power, uh, that's probably not the time when you want to be experimenting with your food storage. So I'm just saying it's something to think about. Um, this is another example. Um, when I did... Um, that I told you last week that I, there was a run on sweet potatoes on my store. They had, had them on sale for like 38 cents a pound. I literally bought the store out. Um, I made sweet potato chips. Isn't this cool? That's like so cute. And they're bright orange. I don't know if you can see. And then I dehydrated some in, um, I don't know what they are. I guess uh, dials or I don't know what they are. You know, little spindle things. Um, to kind of get, I didn't want to do chunks because that you have a problem in dehydrating. Uh, with things dehydrating on the outside but not dehydrating on the inside. So I wanted it to be um, kind of uniform and dehydrate all the way through, so I made them in these little circles. And um, so this is dehydrated, you know, a sweet potato. Um, when they cook up, they cook up about, you know, real, they look really, really nice. They look just like traditional food, like you would never know that they were, had been dehydrated. So that's a plus of dehydrating. Um, freeze dried the same way but again how are you gonna know how much to use right next to it is freeze dried uh, sweet potato um, if something calls for two cups of sweet potato you can scoop out two cups of sweet potato and it's gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio so that's like I said one of the um, biggest thing this is dehydrated um, bell pepper. I actually really like it. I really like it dehydrated. I have a preference to be honest, for um, dehydrated bell pepper just in what I use it for. I have this vegan basmati curry uh, pepper recipe that's just like the bomb and I could use freeze-dried bell pepper but I prefer um, dehydrated. I just like the texture of it better in that particular meal. And But there are other meals where once again, okay, there's an example of freeze dried. Okay, so if I'm calling for, um, if it calls for like two bell peppers, Thrive has this really cool um, comparison chart. So if you look over here under, oh, where is it? Um, bell peppers, there you are, red and green peppers, um, freeze dried, a cup of bell pepper is equal to one bell pepper, okay? So if you've got a recipe that's calling for two bell peppers, you're just gonna have two cups of freeze-dried bell pepper and you don't have to worry about the measurement. It's literally almost a one-to-one -one ratio. Whereas, you know, <laughs> uh, that is literally the equivalent of about eight bell peppers that I dehydrated. I only know that because I dehydrated myself. So I'm just saying, you know, you're gonna, you lose about, 80 to 90% of water when you dehydrate. And that's a good thing, that's not a bad thing, but it makes it really difficult um, to then remember what the ratios are. The only exception to that, um, and you're gonna wanna dehydrate these, um, there's really no such thing as freeze-dried. Um, these are white and red um, beans that I have uh, cooked in a pressure cooker. We talked last week about how you wanna have an electric pressure cooker um, is part of your food storage equipment that I cooked, then dehydrated. And the difference between um, these and normal, you know, uncooked beans is really not much. This beans are probably the only thing where you don't lose a lot of size on them. 
you get them open, you know, and they split open a little bit, you know, like they would, or that they wouldn't if you were cooking them traditionally. But the but the volume is pretty much going to be um, relatively close uh, to a traditional uncooked um, product. Why would you want to cook and dehydrate your own uh, beans? Because these babies are going to cook up in about 10 minutes. Whereas uh, you cook them without um, soaking them overnight. Your choices are cook them overnight. Sorry, soak them overnight. And then cook them in about, what, 20, 30 minutes? I've never done it without a pressure cooker, so I don't know. Um, or you can cook them from scratch without soaking them, and it'll take over two hours. That's a lot of fuel when you're sitting in the middle of, you know, upstate New York and have no power and no fuel. So um, it's something to think about. Really, really is something to think about. The other pluses um, to freeze-dried food, I just want to point some things out. Um, when we started buying uh, freeze-dried food, we started buying it to um, replace things that went bad fast. In a vegan household, uh, there are some things you use a lot of and some things that um, just go bad so fast that it's, and they're expensive, you know, and kale is one of those things. So I just want to show you what my kale looks like after six months. That's my kale after six months. Where's my little bit of My can's been open for six months. And my kale looks just great. And not only that, but you know what? The freeze-dried process, for some reason, the freeze-dried process in kale takes out that kale dirt taste. You know, if you use a lot of kale, you know what I'm talking about. But my kale is still good six months from now. What does yours look like? It's going to look like six months from now if you throw it in the refrigerator. Not very, you know, great. This is, uh, this is um, celery. Okay? This is freeze-dried celery. It looks just like the real thing. Same size and everything. So, that's, you know, another, some of the pluses. I'm going to do one more comparison. This is butternut squash. Okay. This is butternut squash. And that's freeze-dried butternut squash. And it looks pretty much the same size as you would get, you know, normally if you cut it up yourself. And this, I need to get it out of here. Is dehydrated butternut squash. Now it's gonna cook up and look okay but does it look like it's and which one of these is edible right now? This one's edible. This one not so much. Like little burnt like you know butternut squash thing pieces. Um, by the way I don't know if you saw that. Okay if you add like the little what half inch of stuff. This much butternut squash that was 16 ounces. That was a full pound of butternut squash that I um, dehydrated down to like what is that? An eighth of an inch I'm just saying so those are the pros and the cons okay cons price if you don't get it wholesale um, from being you know joining my team feel free I'll put the link down below um, so definitely con is a price is, is an issue price is an issue unless you get it wholesale traditional um, one of the cons is you know it's fragile with all that water, it's fragile. If you move around a lot like I do, that's a problem. Um, con for dehydrated, ratio, and uh, time, and water and fuel. Pluses, dehydrated. If you grow your own vegetables, you're talking free food. Um, it's preserves, it's uh, put in like this with you know a, uh, a lid and a jar sealer like we talked about before. It's going to keep three to five years, so it's long-term storage. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned one of the other um, cons to traditional. It says, this is not long-term storage. Okay, don't be like my mother who would can something like this and keep it on her shelf for 25 years. I think it was still going to be good, you know, 25 years from now. Don't do that. It's not going to be. Okay, when you put, can something like this, you know, in traditional you know, food storage, you're looking at a year, maybe two at the most. Um, but one of the pros of traditional is... It's easy to learn, it's easy to do, and it absolutely is ready to eat out of the, out, out of the jar, you know, just like that. Pros to uh, freeze-dried food, it's 
one-to-one -one ratio. You can eat it out of the can and it'll last unopened 25 years and anywhere from six months to a year, depending on uh, where you live, um, opened. So, and it's really lightweight as well. So is dehydrated food, by the way, that's really lightweight. So dehydrated and freeze dried are gonna be really lightweight, but you know, traditional is gonna be really heavy. I have moved more than my share. Alrighty, that's it. So I didn't mean to keep you so long this week. Talk to you later. Start putting food by. And we'll see ya. Didn't you like my hand right there? Talk to you later. Bye.